Hey guys, it's Steve Frame. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use an Oracle utility called TKProf. TKProf is an interesting utility. Um, it can show you the so-called explain plan that you see using the autotrace utility, which is the sequence of low-level op operations that the database optimizer has strung together to satisfy your query request. Things like index lookups, full table scans, different kinds of joins, etc. That sequence of operations is typically called an explain plan. And uh, both Autotrace and TKProf can show you the explain plan for a particular statement. But TKProf is especially useful to people who are doing Oracle tuning because it also generates a number of low-level statistics that really aren't available with, uh, with Autotrace in, in SQL+. Plus. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you how you can uh, examine a trace file, create a trace file, examine it with TKProf, and get interesting statistics out of it. Again, interesting is in quotes, but uh, it's a useful information that is potentially of value, especially if you are tuning specific SQL statements that you think might be problematic, and you want to kind of dig in under the covers and see uh, what where your performance impacts from those statements may be. So the first thing we need to do in our session, uh, we start from SQL Plus, is we want to enable tracing. Basically, we want the database to start writing extra information to special files it maintains in the background. It doesn't do this all the time because there's some overhead associated with it. So during a tuning session, if we want extra diagnostic info, we would enable tracing. It's, it's almost like bumping up the log level to a deeper, uh, deeper level. You know, if you guys are familiar with logging in applications or even logging on server products, there are different logging levels that you can set to gather more or less information. And obviously, more or less information has performance impacts and such and disk space, etc., associated with it. So let's go into our SQL session. I'm already logged in here, I think. Let's see, am I logged in? I am. Okay. So I'm going to run this command alter session set time statistics equals true. This is basically just a way of saying, hey, Oracle, I want you to start tracking the time it takes for me to do the various things that I do. The session is altered. As long as I am logged in here in this particular session, uh, Oracle is going to now keep track of specific timing data for some of the operations. Now I'm also going to turn on trace, which means it's going to start writing a special log file for me. We'll go look at that log file in a second. My session's all set up. Now, the trace file that Oracle creates for my session is going to have a special name associated with it. It's going to get dumped in a certain directory, and I'm going to look at that, show you that directory in a second. What you need to do first is you need to figure out your so-called server process ID, the server process that is satisfying your session right now. The query on the slide here can do that. I'm going to take it off and run it in SQL plus. Oh, you know what, what got me here is uh, the so-called smart quotes. If you're, all, if you're cutting and pasting code from a Microsoft Office product, you will often run into the issue where it puts in these sort of curly quotes that Microsoft calls smart quotes. They look very nice in Word documents and PowerPoint slides, but they will severely hose your code. So this wants to be an ordinary apostrophe. Okay, there we go. I have my code, I run it, and it tells me that my server process ID for this current session is 1076. I'm going to note that down somewhere. Let's just put it right here for yucks. 1076. I'm going to want to use that number later. Now, I know my server process ID. I want to go into this directory here. I'll navigate to it uh, just through Windows Explorer first, and then we'll, we'll go by command line to it. See? Oracle XC, app, Oracle, admin, XC, you dump. And this is, you may remember in the past we've talked about Oracle architecture. Uh, you dump is the user dump destination. Trace files associated with user sessions would go to this directory. Remember my server process ID was 1076. There it is. And we should be able to find it in here just by doing the date modified. And boom, there's the trace file that's currently getting written. 
Now I want to do something interesting in my trace file or in this current session that uh, TKProf can find some good data on. So I'm going to run this query. There's really nothing particularly special about this query. I just made up a query that I knew would be somewhat resource intensive. Um, the all underscores tables and all underscore objects are actually views that reach into the Oracle system catalog. So even if you were to select star from any of these guys, there would be some complex operations going on under the covers. I happen to be joining them together in a way that maybe makes a little bit of sense, but again, the logic of the query is not important. I'm just trying to force Oracle to do some substantial amount of work. I'm going to take this query. I'm going to run this guy. And we're off to the races. Again, the data is not terribly significant. The main point here is I'm forcing Oracle to do a good bit of work. Okay, so what do I want to do? My trace file, let's look at them again, still has about 20k in there. Um, we're going to format him using the tkprof utility. So by here I want to go by command line to this destination. I could do it from anywhere, but the paths would just be longer. I'd have to type them in, so I'll save myself a little bit of typing going here first. I'm going to cd over to that directory. Okay. I'm going to get the name of that file. I'll store them here for a second. And then I'm going to run this command. So I'm going to say tkprof, the name of the file that I want to trace, and then where I want the output report to go. tkprof. I'd like to trace, and I'll put it in something I'm going to call report yay.txt, because I think I might have used report.txt in the past. Okay. Oracle has run it. If it has worked, in there we go. So in, in my udump, I end up with report yay.txt. Now, why do I have to do that? Let's look at the trace file itself. So there's some English readable text and whoa, craziness. There's to actually try to read the trace file itself is very difficult for the layperson. Uh, you know, you, you can obviously see some things you recognize in here, but it'd be pretty tough to figure out what's going on in here. Occasionally, Oracle support will ask you to send them a trace file directly, and I'm sure they have specialists who can read these things as they are. But for you and I, it would be pretty difficult to read this guy. So what TKProf does, uh, it runs through that report and it, excuse, yeah, that trace file, I should say, and it produces a report that's a little more readable for us. There we go. So we want to look at something like this instead. And you can see there's some interesting statistics set up here. When I did my alter session, sets equal trace equal true. Uh, it's doing different counts, and we'll talk about what these various columns mean in a minute, but let's try to find that query we recently ran. This looks like it could be it. There we go. So we can find, just lost my mouse there. Yeah, this is the one. So you recognize this as the query we ran. And it's a, it's a somewhat substantial amount of work. You can see that uh, all kinds of uh, statistics were generated as a function of that. The parse phase is when Oracle is kind of figuring out how it's going to go satisfy the statement. It's figuring out what the execution plan is going to be. Fetch is it actually returning the data. You guys saw that that took a reasonable amount of time, about I guess 15 hundredths of a second of CPU time total. Um, and you can see various other statistics listed across here, the number of rows returned, etc. If you go down a little bit further, you can see, oof, look at this craziness that's going on there. We can see it's reaching into, through that, all underscore objects and uh, I guess it was DBA tables or whatever other uh, view we used as part of that query. 
uh, it's reaching into the so-called X dollar tables, which are kind of the brains of Oracle under the covers. So again, the pole point was to just give it some nasty workload to do, and you can see this is a, a fairly nasty workload that, that it's working on there. But we want to get the TK Prof report so that we can look at these various columns here. Let's jump back to the slides for a second. Okay. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, this is when Oracle tries to either find a query in the shared pool, remember that it's trying to match on a hash value it computes on the statement it sees, or it has to go and create a new plan altogether. Um, this is when it does the so-called work of the query. For the select statement, which we issued, it's not doing anything really that falls under the execute. If you were to do an update statement, as is written in the slide, obviously, there would be, that's, I guess, where the bulk of the work that we think of under execute goes. So if I'm doing a select statement, all I'm really going to see is the parse and the fetch. Fetch is when I pull the data back. If I'm actually changing data, I'd see the parse and the execute. So um, how many times a particular thing occurred, the CPU time spent on it. Let's go up here a little bit. Yeah, so we had... Uh, 83 fetches, one parse operation, etc. for this particular statement, one execution for this statement. Um, fetches is kind of deal, deals with the idea that it grabs chunks of rows at a time. The wall clock time is, is what we see in elapsed. Uh, this is the sort of thing, if you see a high number of physical IOs on a query, that's one of the things in TKProf that should really set off a red flag for you. High number of physical IOs is almost always going to transform uh, translate, excuse me, into a performance issue for your query. So when you run the TK Prof report, if you see a high number under disk, that's going to be something that, that, that would be concerning to you. Um, and there's some other information in there as well, and we, we, we could kind of dig into the science of this uh, a fair amount. Um, but So as is listed on this slide, things that you would generally look for that would be concer concerning under TK Prof um, is this idea of you know, high parse count to execute count. If we see a lot of parses um, relative to executes, that basically means that um, we can't find the query in the cache. If we see all these hard parses, or we see a number of hard parses, then the Oracle is not be able to match that statement in the library cache, and it's having to parse again and again the statement that it should theoretically recognize from, from the past and already have an execution plan in place for. Other concerns, and again, of course, you can read them off the slides, but um, again, this kind of deals with the idea of we, we want Oracle to be remembering statements or remembering execution plans. If the execution count is one for a lot of different statements, it means that Oracle thinks it keeps seeing different statements all the time. If there's a disparity between the time the CPU spent and the elapsed or wall clock time, it's symptomatic of a weight of some kind. It's not like Oracle was working really hard throughout that entire period to return something to you. It's not like the amount of data or the complexity necessarily messed it up. It's that Oracle had to wait on some resource. There could be a locking issue in your application, a variety of things in the database that we're not really going to dig into could potentially be tuned in effectively. But if you see a big disparity between CPU and elapsed time, that would kind of send off warning bells to potentially, hmm, maybe something's wrong. Here we can see CPU and elapsed are pretty close together, so probably not really much of an issue. Okay, again, want to hit disk rarely. Um, if we see so-called cache misses, uh, cache misses reflect in TK prop, that indicates what we talked about before that the Oracle's parsing a little bit too much and it's not seeing uh, statements that it's found previously in the library cache. It's having to reparse them each time. So again, th this video is not going to tell you a ton about using TK prop. But the basic idea is I can use it, if I create a trace file, I can use the tkprof utility to format the trace file in a way that's human readable. And then I get a report like this. I look for numbers that seemed a little bit strange, like if the disk number were really high relative to other queries, difference between this and this, etc. We talked about the parse counts and parse ratios being off. If it were me, I'd be pulling out the book and kind of looking through these things and trying to assess, you know, what... what uh, what might be reflective of performance issues with a particular query. Sometimes if it's a large query that it requires an intensive amount of work, these numbers are just going to be high. But TKProf is a tool that you can use to see under the covers. You can actually see what's going on inside of the Oracle engine, how it's processing things, what parts of things are taking the most time, what parts of things are taking relatively less time, etc. And it's just one more uh, weapon in your tuning arsenal. 
right, guys. Thanks very much.